Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Trending Thursday. My name is Glenn Tompkins, Senior Instructor here at VectorVest. Glad to have you here. Glad to be here. Still not feeling 100%, but I'm at least feeling 90%. Glad to be here. Going to try to bring some uh, some energy to the market. I think we need it. Market looked like it wanted to run up today, and then it went fizzle. It went did a little something like this. Wah, 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 wah. And that's where we sit. And I think it was a whole lot of irrational exuberance. That was the word that I used in the live stream yesterday with Patrick in that the Fed came on, the Fed talked, the market responded. And I was at a loss for words of why the market responded the way that it did. Um, but it did. So what did I say we needed to do? We needed to wait for follow through today. We looked like we were getting that follow through early this morning. And then in the jockey club this morning, uh, when I was doing the jockey club, we slowly but surely watched the market pull back. Uh, we'll take you at 90%, Uncle Glenn. You at 90% is better than most at 100. Thank you, fitness. I appreciate that. First of, first of all, Eton, thank you for being here from Israel. If you can hear me loud and clear, please let me know in the chat. Um, uh, let me know in the chat, number one. Number two, if you're brand new to the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so that you'll be alerted when a video like this comes out or a live stream like this comes out. Uh, if you like what we do here today, don't forget to hit the like button. Most of all, most of all, most of all, I'm trying very, 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 very hard to get more people involved in coming to the channel. I need you guys right now to to uh, copy and paste the live stream link that we got going on right now, folks, and share it on your social circles. Please do. I think with all of the work and the time that we put in here, VectorVest, we need to get out to more people to help them to make money in the market. All right, so please hit, uh, uh, copy the link that you got going on right now. Share it, share it, share it, share it. Let's get more people into the room. All right, with that, we can see that today markets mix. Uh, the composite is the only thing that's up. All of the other major indices are down. So again, from yesterday's irrational exuberance, it doesn't look like we had any real follow through. It looked like it was gonna happen and then boom, it turned around. And I think it smacked a lot of people in the face because a lot of people were anticipating, well, the Fed is gonna be optimistic and the Fed's gonna, listen, don't fight the Fed. The Fed said what he's going to do. We got to see what he's really going to do. And what he's really going to do, I still think that he raises 75 basis points. Um, even if it goes up, to, uh, goes down to 50 basis points, that could definitely be the onset of a Christmas rally or a Santa rally going into the end of the year. I still think that if he stays at 75 basis points, that the market meanders along. It, I, I still think long term, long term, long term, long term. I still think that the market is it's got some more downside. All right. So putting all of that together and individual stocks. We'll see if I've got time to look at individual stocks uh, today who asked me about that. Alex, we'll see if, if we can do that for you today. Um, before we get into the market analysis, I do want to let you know that we've got a special guest today. He's going to come on right after we do some analysis of the market. All right, so what is going on today? Um, let's take me here. Uh, what's going on today? Fed Bowman's interest rates needs to be sufficiently restrictive for some time. The Fed, and I took a lot of notes from yesterday's Fed speech that he did uh, for about a half an hour talking about what was going on with interest, uh, with inflation, where his point was going to be on uh, interest rates. He said that there's no clear path that inflation is being affected. Like he, those were his words. There's no clear path just quite yet, but he's trying to remain somewhat optimistic because he understands that the economy is going through pain through to his monetary policy. So he already said in Jackson Hole that he was going to cause the economy some pain. The economy is fighting back. Will he buckle? I, I don't know if he's got an opportunity to really buckle because if inflation is coming down and he says that it's not coming down the way he would like to see it come down and that he's raising the terminal rate now to about 5%, which is off of the lower mark uh, that he said much earlier in beginning to raise the interest rates, you know, it, it still is a hawkish Fed, but trying to divvy that out with a little bit of optimism. And I think that the market is taking that optimism and trying to run with it 
without really taking a look at what's going on. Now, here's another story. Beware of the fine print in Powell's message experts warn. Now, in this story, um, the fact that before Powell's speech, the market was giving a probability close to 75% that at the December Fed meeting, the Fed 75% would raise its rates by 50 basis points compared to the 75 basis points, which it has increased them over four periods, period, period, previous periods. However, um, from what the Fed chairman said yesterday, investors were left with only the confirmation that the U.S. central banks will begin to slow pace. The central banks will, be, uh, will begin to slow the pace of the rate hikes as soon as December. That's different from everything else. The central bank will begin. However, in our view, this is a story um, by somebody giving their opinion. However, in our view, everything else is very relevant as it implies that the Fed may raise its rates more than expected. The terminal rate is expected to be close to five versus the more optimistic uh, estimates of many investors, which is at 4.6. And that it, it, uh, that it is willing to keep them at that level for as long as necessary. So... Again, I think a lot of people are reading into what the Fed said. I think the Fed was clear, but ambiguous at the, at the same time. So that makes him clearly ambiguous. I'll put this, I'll put the crickets. Clearly ambiguous. All right, so um, those are my two stories on the market from the Fed's perspective. Uh, Wall Street falls after bleak manufacturing data, sales force tumbles. And from this point, that is what the market uh, news is, and I'm going to bring up the market timing graph real quick. This is the intraday move of the market, and man, the market's all over the place. All right, going back to the 930 hour where everybody was so optimistic and so bullish going into the market, there's the gap up, and now we're still below the gap from the market open, and we're still higher than we were yesterday, but dang on it, folks, that's, that's a tough market. Sounds like clear, clear ambiguity. Ooh, I like that. That is a new Glennism. David, are you here? Clear ambiguity. Ooh. All right. So, um, with that being said, it's a tough market today. A lot of you woke up this morning. The market was running. And you were saying, "Yay, baby, let these stocks go. Let these stocks go." Now you're sitting back going, "Dang, why did I let them stocks go?" That's what you all sound like out there. You all do. Um, so keeping all of that in in play, uh, that's where we stand as the market. I'm going to give us some plays to look at. I'm going to give us some news on some other stocks as well. Joey, bring up my guests. All right, let's go bring this. Uh, and you know here at VectorVest, we bring a lot of uh, information to our subscribers. We have another course coming up called the Options Jump Starter Course. It's going to be put on by Jim Penna. And Jim, I'm going to let you talk a little bit about it. Go have at it, my friend. Hey, Glenn. Hello, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well and had a great Thanksgiving. It's always hard to follow, Glenn. I have no new words to make up. <laughs> um, I can I can try, but uh, I'll, I'll try to write them down for next time. But uh, Glenn, thanks for having me on, and thanks for everyone being here. I just wanted to talk a minute. Glenn's right. We do have a course coming up. But before the course, I just wanted to take a minute to invite you guys. Next week, um, we have a free webcast that's gonna talk about options. It's called the Options Jumpstart, a foundation to, uh, a beginner's guide rather to, to profitable options trading. And it's gonna introduce you, it's really for new folks to options. If you know options, you're real experienced or advanced option trader, listen, it might be a good review for you, join me anyway. But if not, um, and you're new to options, you know, the key to it is that what we try to do in this presentation is, let those who are new to options not, not be afraid of options, right? A lot of folks who don't understand options just, you know, stay away from them. We don't want you to do that. The, the benefits, the flexibility, the versatility of understanding how to use options is endless. Mm -hmm. You can increase mm -hmm. leverage without paying margin rates, right? You can profit in a falling market or rising whatever whatever week we're in, right? At a, at a much lower rates uh, uh, and cash outlay. So the leverage is key there. You can generate income, a safe, steady income. You can get paid to buy a stock, right? If you don't know anything about options, you should know there's a way to actually place an option trade where you get paid 
to ultimately go in and buy a stock if it goes down. And then, of course, in this market, what's most important to me as manager of retirement services is the ability to protect your portfolio, right? So Glenn was showing a market timing graph on my other monitor here. I'm looking at a market timing graph. And, you know, listen, there's still a lot of macro uncertainty, right? We don't, We had a big day yesterday. I said in the color guard last night that the Fed chair's words were interpreted as, interpreted as very dovish, right? I, I don't know that. The market doesn't believe so today, I guess. But you can see, I'm looking at my graph in March, again in July through August, where we hit new highs on the VectorVest composite, only to have that turnover and, and then reach new lows, right? So we're hitting lower highs, lower lows, and we're still there even after yesterday's pop. Why is that important to this option presentation I'm going to do? Because you're going to learn how to ensure your individual positions or your overall market uh, or your overall portfolio against the falling market. So we're going to show you how to do that using put options as insurance as well. So important things to know in this market. Again, you know, we've had a nice a nice run, uh, but, uh, you know, we don't know where it's going. We, we You know, the, the term that the Fed chair used was, you know, a restrictive policy. There you go. You can't right. fight that. That's... They, they keep they keep using that phrase, right, Glenn? So, you know, which which for the more well, listen, that's the beauty of options, right? For the more prudent conservative investor, you have the ability to protect your portfolio, right? And for the trader, there's nothing better, right? I used to say, and I still have a you know a, a trading account that I kind of leave to the side that my wife doesn't know about. And I tra I trade that one much more actively. And I've always said, I mean, I could care less if the if the market's in an uptrend or a downtrend. It doesn't matter, right? I can buy a put just as easy as I can buy a call. And so that's the beauty of options. So whether you want to be more active, it is important. It's an important tool to have in your toolbox uh, for the overall investor, whether it's prudent, whether you're trading. Um, you know, the power, the flexibility and versatility uh, really come in handy. So I'd love for you to join me. I believe there's a link. I don't have the chat box up on my other monitor. Jo Joey put it up there for him. Fantastic. So if you go to that link, you can sign up. I believe it's next Wednesday. We have uh, a presentation at noon and then again at 6 p.m. on the 7th and then on the 8th at 4.30 p.m. So we look forward to having you join us. Uh, Brian D'Amico will be in there uh, with me doing that as well. So I'm, I'm going to give you a real Hopefully life story. I, I got a I got an account like you do. It's got a couple thousand dollars sitting in it. And I play mainly options in it. I bought a weekly option on Tencent Music, I think it is. Okay. Um, I used our tools. I found out, I got it on Monday. Um, it cost me like, a uh, couple hundred bucks to buy six contracts, blah, 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 blah. I closed it out today. Mm -hmm. It went from a couple hundred dollars to now worth over like $450. And that was on a weekly option. That was on a weekly Good. call option. Uh, yeah. and, and that account specifically is just for options to just to generate extra money. So then when my sure. wife says, Hey, we need to go take a weekend trip. I can go to that portfolio of stocks that I'm trading for options and go just drag that money out. Glenn, what scares me is you said there's a couple of thousand. That's not the one you told me you started with like 30,000 though, right? No. No, no. <laughs> no that's Joey's just... that's Joey's portfolio. That that's that's <laughs> Joey's portfolio. That's not mine. I'm, I'm, I'm just no, kidding. Come on. Listen, it's uh it's a great tool to have. <laughs> Uh, the leverage is is very powerful, and the ability to profit in up and down trending markets. All of these things are very important. You're here because you're building and managing your own portfolios, whether you call them your retirement portfolios or whatever they are. Uh, if you're new to options, join us next Wednesday and or Thursday. There you go. Thank you for that, Jim. Everybody, you. hit that like button for Jim. Uh, and I, I think he started it off right by saying that a lot of people start just to see the word options and they run. Folks, this is a very important tool to have in your tool belt. Jim, between Jim and Brian, they do an excellent job to help the beginner option understand, uh, the options trader understand how this works. Um, so we invite you to, to hit that hit that link. Uh, join them. The, the webcast is free. The webcast is free on the 7th at 12, the 7th at 6 p.m., and on the 8th 
at 4.30. They're all free. Come listen to what he's got to say. And you know something? It may open some doors. It may turn on some lights and give you another stream of being able to grow your portfolio. So with that, Jim, thank you again very much. Don't forget, folks, hit that like button. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to spend with VV Nation. Thank you, Glenn. Take care, everybody. All right. right. Thank you for that. So, folks, we're going to continue on um, with some other stories that we got going on. How to become a millionaire trading. Start with a billion. There you go. Or get VectorVest to grow your portfolio. Outstanding. That's absolutely right, Mark. All right. So, what other stories do I have going on? Uh, how many of you still trade in oil? Type a one in the room. How many of you still trade in oil? Type a one. I've got, I'm going to type a one because I'm still trading WTI. I'm still in it. I'm through the, the through the ups, through the downs. Um, man, it, it's been a tough ride. I ain't going to lie. It's been a tough ride, but I still think that on paper, it's still a good way to go. Um, And this story helps to back that up. Oil rises as China eases COVID curbs. Uh, And the thing about why this is important from a China perspective is because they are the biggest importer of oil. Well, they got like 100 trillion billion people. They got a lot of people. All right. So they are the biggest importer of oil. And with everything that's going on, the growth fears stem out of the zero tolerance for COVID. I think at some point in time, I really, LNG does, uh, not, we're going to talk about LNG. LNG can count, uh, you know, something, I'm going to say that LNG counts. I'm going to say that LNG counts. But with the zero tolerance for COVID locking people down, it affects people's uh, ability to do business. And it affects the people. If and if it affects the people's ability to do business, it lessens the demand. If it lessens the demand, then China doesn't need the oil. So once they start to curb this, and I think one of are they going to get to some point in time where they're going to have herd immunity? I think that a lot of people over there in China have already had COVID. I um, or the other side of it is China going to actually go outside of its country? to go get some vaccines that work better than what they have. I think something has to happen because the people in China ain't having it no more. They are sort of like, yo, this is not it. And they're they're rising. And this is communist country. And these people are stepping up with the idea that they could be put in jail or killed saying this ain't cool. I think China at some point in time has got to step back. All right. Uh, Did Glenn take attendance yet? Jay, you're late. I marked you as late. I did mark you as late. All right, next one. Another story. Kroger hikes forecast after stronger grocery sales top estimates. You know, no matter what happens in an, in a recession or when the market gets all beat up, people got to eat. All right, they may be spending less money on food, but people still got to eat. Kroger is a store that people buy food from. Walmart, I still think, is the biggest food pro- uh, food provider on from a market standpoint. But um, a place to probably think about keeping money or investing. Kroger could be a place to go. This is an interesting story. India may become the third largest economy by 2030, overtaking Japan and Germany. That's huge. Now, we do know that uh, Apple said that they're going to start uh, dishing out more of their work to India to take it out of China so that, you know, once China, you know, if China produces this way as much as it does globally, when things like this that are happening in China affect uh, the overall global market, I'm thinking that Apple's not going to be the first company. Or Apple is, you know, one of the first, but a lot of different companies are going to go down this path of diversifying where they get their products. And in India is going to actually probably be the beneficiary of it. All right. So with that being said, good story. I'm going to look at an India ETF for you. I'm going to look at some uh, meme stocks today. AMC spikes up on volatile trading. Other meme stocks are rallying as well. We got AMC, Ape, GME is up today. But the big look at the big move. The last time I saw it, it was up about 13 percent. AMC is even moving higher and higher, up 25 percent. Um has already halted once for volatility. I don't know what's making it move today as much as it is. Meanwhile, there's nothing that, I got to probably look at a different story to see what's making AMC move up as much as it did. But 38.8 million shares already more than a full day average of 23. Something is going on. Uh, You know what I want to do? I want to do this real quick. 
Uh, news on AMC. Let's go see. I want to see. Uh, watch list. Da, 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 da. What happened? To AMC plans layoffs. Mm -hmm, that's not a good story. Uh, AMC number. I don't know what's. Because anybody tell me what's making AMC move today? I wasn't prepared to do that. Um, 22 hours ago, AMC booted its CEO after only three months, gave her $10 million payout and cut about 20% of its staff. Is that what, and that was 22 hours ago. Is that what's making the move today? Um, three months in the job, windfall, reserve, blah, 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 blah. blah. It's quite a different story, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. But AMC, by all means, is up today. Uh, the most out of the majority of the meme stocks that you have going on out there. Another story, another story. And, every, and if anybody out there jumps up and says, you're pushing extra, I'm going to be very angry. All right. So, but it's news. Xro is still moving. It announces major milestone with Linamar, e Axel phase one project completion and provides operational update. Um, uh, that is wrong company, Glenn. Fake news on which... Oh, you talk about what on this story? Oh, that's AMC Networks. My fault. That's not fake news. That's AMC Networks, not AMC Theaters. Ah, okay, never mind. Jet, you're right. I didn't, I didn't pay attention to that. That's AMC Networks. This is probably a real story. It's not fake news. It's not AMC Theaters. That was my fault. That was my fault. That was so my fault. All right, so Jet, thank you for that. That was not, that was, that was, there it is. 52 minutes ago, this is AMC. On behalf of everyone watching this, thanks for saving our coins. AMC workers share public service announcement about popcorn sizes. All right, this is AMC theater. But Jet, thank you for that. I did not, I did not pay attention. Uh, that other story was AMC networks, not AMC theaters. All right, so... Nonetheless, it's on the rise today. Uh, Mark says, pump it up. I'm not pumping it up, but it's a stock that's on the rise. It's a speculative stock. I still think that everyone out there, uh, as you hear more and more about Xro, go take a check, take a look at it. All right. Uh, and that was the AMC Networks, Jay. 10 million is a nice package. I hope that if I ever get booted from here, that I can get me a good $10 million package. Joey, on the other hand, jo Joey might get about a buck two fifty. I think, I think, what do you think, Joey? Joey? Yeah, a couple two tree. A couple two tree? All right. Yeah. All right. So, uh, X Row is in, in my news today. Uh, as I've been talking a lot about, especially for those people who are not subscribers to the VectorVest software, we do give you opportunities to see what stocks are moving. Go to our main website, www.vectorvest.com. All right. From here, go over to where it says blogs. Go down the hot stocks. Every day, we try to put a stock out there for you. Uh, the stock that came out yesterday was CrowdStrike. Uh, falls 20% after earnings. Should you buy the dip or is this uh, the concern for Cry? Uh, is the dip or is the concern for CrowdStrike substantiated? We give you a story, um, but we do that almost every single day. You guys need to come check out our blog. Uh, that's the hot stock part, but we got swing trading up in here. All right, swing trading ETFs, the complete guide. We've got options up in here. We got options up in here. I take off all my clothes. I got those options here. Yeah, I'm going to take my clothes. I'm not taking off no, no, my clothes. But understanding a little bit more about options, we have it on our blog. Let's go down. We got the hot stocks. We even have retirement on our blog as well. Folks, you guys need to utilize this. And you know something? If you see some stuff that makes sense, you can still take a 30-day trial. We give you that opportunity to take a 30-day trial right there. It's unclear what calls the jump in the stock, but volume has been heavier than normal shortly before 20, another 40. Is that you're talking about uh GME? Uh sorry, AMC Boston. And if you are, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. So um, the story that we're going to look at today is going to be from the hot stock version of it, CrowdStrike. All right. Um, and before we get into our uh, analysis of these stocks, we got a new store, folks. Go to www.vectorvest.com forward slash merchandise. Joey put the link already in the chat for you guys. 
But from what I understand, look at this. We got some holiday apparel. Look at that there. So if you want to give a gift to a family member, to a loved one, we do have some Vector Vest holiday apparel in the new store. I, why? you Don't even start. Mark, Jay, you're both in timeout. Mark, Jay, you're both in timeout. You're in timeout. You're in timeout. You're in timeout. Don't type more than that. Robert says, I'm up 30, 350%. On luck and coffee, COVID Chinese, uh, uh, China COVID reopening is helping the stock now. It just passed two year weekly high. I just saw two weeks ago. All right. So, Roger, you're going to time out too because you typed it backwards. Uh, this is how we greet each other now. You know, no, you don't. Hello, ball. All right. So, I wanted to bring to your attention that we do have some holiday apparel in our store. All right. With all of that, let's go take a look at some of these stocks. Let's go back to the system. Let's go to the viewers tab. Let's start off with what's going on in the market still. I, we had a mixed market when we first looked at it, when we first came on. How about now the NASDAQ is moving higher? Uh, the NASDAQ is up about two-tenths of a percent. The Vector Vest Composite is up about a tenth percent. The VIX is down, but still, look at that. Volatility is falling, still above the value of 20, but barely. So when the VIX or the volatility on the S&P 500 is above the value of 20, there happens to be volatility in the market. It's dropping today. I still think that we got a lot of hopium out there. I think, and, and, and I'm with Jim. I think a lot of people took the Fed's statements as being dovish. I, I, You know something? Wait till the December hike comes. You're going to be able to get a better feel of how, how, how dovish or how um, um, hawkish he still is. All right? Uh, but the Dow is down. The S&P is down. So we have a mixed market today. The stocks in my big news today, all those stocks that we just looked at, oil on the rise, um, and we'll see what goes on with that. Kroger is in here. Here's my my ETF for India. All right, iShares India Index, INDA. If India is poised to grow that much by the year 2030, which is eight years from now, to be the third biggest economy, folks, this is something to keep your eyes on, all right? AMC, GME, my two meme stocks moving, and here's the story on CrowdStrike. Um, let's go take a look at all of these stocks, put these on a three-month view, put these on a three-month view, and let's go take a look at them. There's Kroger. So Kroger reported earnings, and from the earnings, they pushed up higher, all right? They guided higher. Well, with that, interesting how its stock is pulling back. Uh, prior to that, from the low, the stock has been moving up, sat in a channel a little bit, still above this level of support, though, of 47.86. Look at the wick today, came all the way down to test that level of support. We've got a closed body, a red body. I wouldn't buy it today, but look at the 388 on the stock. Still looks good. If you own it, leave it alone. If you don't, I'd wait to see if it can at least take out today's high. Uh, the next one, India, I'm going to put this on a one-year graph, though. Um, it's been running since about, uh, this market's been running since about, uh, October 13th, hitting some headways with some levels of resistance. Uh, all I really want you to do for this is just keep your eyes on it. All I really want you to do is keep your eyes on this. I'm not telling you to buy, I'm not telling you to ever buy anything, but I do want you to, that news article at least should have this stock on your radar. Let's go do a three-month graph on oil. Oil has been all over the place. Again, I'm playing WTI, bounced off support. Last time, this is a beautiful level of support, by the way, sitting at about 6507. Last time it bounced, it ran, ran, and now a little bit of a shooting star pattern prior to the move to the downside. Nice open candle. The 3 and the 8, even with today's activity, the 3 and the 8 just crossed. I'm liking the play from a technical standpoint. Just keep your eyes on it. I like the play from a technical standpoint, bouncing off support, 3-8 crossing, a, a closed candle today. So I don't know if I would buy it today. And it came uh, back below this level of resistance of 70-76. But I do like the bounce. I do like the 3-8. Keep your eyes on that. What else is in here? AMC, big move today. I'll put this on a six-month graph. One of the biggest days out of the last uh, few weeks. Big up day, big volume, RT went above one. Might be something to keep your eyes on. The stock moved from a sell to a to a hold. A nice up day. It did break through a level of resistance, still holding above it. Very little wick at the top. It could be garnering some strength. 
Fox reporting that the rail strike has been averted. I saw that Congress put through something to send to the president to sign off on it. I don't know what the um, comp, uh, what what it worked out to be. I don't know if the rail workers got any more days off because that was the biggest thing. They needed some more PTO. I don't know if the agreement gave them a couple of days or something, but it's been averted. And, you know, it's interesting that this is a situation where this law, where this ability to stop railroad strikes uh, is from the 20s. So way back in the 1920s, it's been used 18 times to to stop railroad strikes. And, I, you know, to a certain degree, I've got a problem with it. I got a problem with it because it's a private company and the government can step in and say no, no, no. But I understand why the government can step in to say no, 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 because it can affect us strategically and economically. But it's kind of interesting when you walk that fine line when the government can come to a private business and dictate what they can or cannot do. I that's a rabbit hole that we won't, you know, encroach on here. I'm just stating an opinion. All right, I'm just stay, I'm just stating an opinion in regards to that and it's something that it's it it does become a slippery slope, folks, all right? It does become a slippery slope. Anybody agree with that? All right, um I I want to know they did it with the air controllers as well. All right, but the air controllers was that private or was that governmental? All right, where the air controllers is that a government thing? I think, you know, so I, I, all I'm saying is just be, be be cognizant and understand what's going on when when, a gov- when the government can do that. that. That's all that I can say in regards to that. All right, next stock in my list is GME. Uh, right at a level of resistance. Earnings are coming out. Patrick said earnings are coming out. They could be posting a profit. But it looks like AMC for the right now for right now is outpacing GME. Big wick at the top of GME, big wick at the bottom. A little bit, of, I'm not going to call it indecision, a little bit of a spinning top going on. I do like that the 3.8 just crossed on GME as well, but it's got this level of resistance of 27.75 to get through. Next stock, my last stock is CrowdStrike. The story talked about CrowdStrike and probably I would stay away from it coming off of this high Look at the trend. If I could connect all of the highs, it's definitely trending lower even after earnings. All right, so those are my big news stories today. Hottest industries, I'm not going to even do that today. What I am going to go through is uh, my short-term plays. All right, my short-term plays, let's go see if there's any. Look at these stocks and how much they've moved up today. Is it worth it for you to take any plays on these stocks? All right, these are all big news. Tops, there's tops. You want to look at tops, there's tops. I'm going to analyze Tops has got good upside potential, but not a safe stock. This becomes more of an aggressive stock, number one. Number two, the stock is currently undervalued. I like that. Uh, the stock is not fundamentally, and the stock is in a downtrend. Big move up today, but still in a downtrend, a hold recommendation. Um, so I'm thinking that this is news driven. If you weren't already in it, I'm not sure if I would go and buy it. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, let's go take a look at the graphs of these. All right, I'm going to put these on a one-month graph. I'm going to put these on a one-month graph, looking at it from a trade perspective. This is probably news-driven. A lot of profit-taking going on with this stock. Stock moved up nicely for the last three days on good volume. I like that. Uh, the stock does have some uh, some profit-taking going on. It's sitting at $8.76. I don't know what the news is and how good the news is. Um, so, uh, uh, controllers are FAA employees. That's government. All right. So they are government. So the government stepping in for the air traffic controllers on a governmental body is a different story than the government stepping in on private rail companies. Right. So again, all I'm doing is just putting that out there. I'm not arguing the point. I just gave you my opinion in regards to that and just keep your eyes on that. I would be careful with KTRA after the nice big update today. A lot of profit taking, a lot of people taking their profit. Wow, same thing with Vax. Big move, probably news driven, but look at that. That is a shooting star. Uh, it looks like there's probably going to be some more downhill move on it tomorrow. I'm not, t- as much as it moved up today, I would not suggest you take a position in it, even though I like, for the most part, the three and the eight have done a good job prior to the big jump up which is why I love the 3 and the 8. RT jumped up, but look at that strictly profit-taking. 
Next one is OKTA. Not a lot of profit taking on this. As it gapped up, this was not an earnings play. It was an earnings play. OKTA moved up nicely because it was an earnings play. Prior to that, the 3 8 had crossed. Prior to the earnings play, follow through on big volume. I don't mind this stock at all. I don't, very little give back. I may, as long as it goes higher than today's high, uh, before you jump on board. ETH, a little bit more give back, stopped right at a level of resistance, still currently below it on big volume. RT went above one. Stock did move from a hold to a buy. May not be a bad play, but I need to see it. Uh, some more confirmation of the upward move. And the last one is tops. Transportation ship. This was not an earnings play, but a lot of give back. I would stay away from that if I'm not already in it right now. And it did it yesterday. Look at all of that give back yesterday and still look at that jump and give back again. That's two days in a row. A lot of selling pressure. I'd be careful. I would not want you to be suckered into buying this right now. All right. So those are my short term plays. There was only one or two stocks in there that I thought that had some wherewithal to keep moving up higher. Swing trades. These are my longer term, middle of the road people out there. I got some swing trade plays for you. Not all of them are up today, but from a swing trade perspective, from a swing trade perspective, uh, you're going to love the graphs. I REL, VOC, CMC, ASC, ACGL. You may not know all of these stocks. Don't care. All I want to show you is from the perspective, from a swing trade perspective, put them on a three-month graph. Let's change my layout. Let's change my layout to my swing trade layout. All right, where is it? There it is. Now I'm looking at a 20-day exponential moving average, and I'm looking at value. So the couple of things that I like about these trades. One, are they above the 20-day and moving higher? Look at that. Yes. What's the earnings per share look like? looks really good and earnings is the engine that drives the stock's price higher and what else they are undervalued so i like these stocks from a swing trade perspective i look at a three-month graph bottom left top right not a lot of volatility from a swing trade perspective something to keep on your radar now voc on the other hand is moving bottom left top right but sitting in a channel consolidating undervalued above the 20 day i really would like to see this stock break above the high sitting at the value of this high, which is a level of resistance, sitting at the value of $10.06. If it can do that with the rising earnings per share, undervalued and moving right under that, this could be a potential for a good upside position. Uh, CMC, same scenario, bottom left, top right, not a lot of volatility, rising earnings per share, definitely undervalued. New high today, I wouldn't bite on the down day though, but this 20-day um Exponential moving average is serving as a beautiful level of support. Love it. Um, and again, from a swing trade perspective, may not be a bad play. ASC, transportation ship, back in the news again. A lot of shipping companies are starting to make money. Undervalued above the 20-day, moving nicely. Not a lot of volatility. Earnings per share looks good. Volume is solid. Right now, though, a little bit of sideways move, but currently above the 20-day. I'd like to see it take out that three-month high before you jump on board, but I love that it's undervalued. Next stock is ACGL, beautifully moving up. Now, the only thing I don't like about this stock is that it's clearly overvalued, which means that people are willing to pay a premium to own the stock. Earnings per share looks good. Not a ton of volume, or it's probably skewered by this one day where it gapped up, but I like the bottom left, top right. All right, for those people who are swing traders, did you find any possible um, candidates? Type one in the room. If you are a swing trader, did you find any possible candidates in that list? Type one in the room. My job is to bring you the stocks to help you to make some money in the market. That's my job. Speculative plays, my shorter term people. One month, I'm gonna look at one month stuff here. All of them are up today. Now, in my speculative plays, I'm looking for stocks that are specifically not fundamentally sound. I'm not worried about the fundamentals. These are speculative plays. They're all in uptrends. Uh, they are buy recommendations. I'd like to have higher CIs on these. But the biggest thing is that they're fundamentally not sound, but they are moving up for my shorter term people who are looking to buy some stocks Shorter term, I'm going to put this back onto a one-month graph, change the graph layout again back to trade. I'm going to change the graph layout back to trade. Where are we looking at the three and the eight? Look at that. On a one-month graph, not fundamentally sound, but going up. Bottom left, top right, RT. Look at that. 
388 looks solid. New three month high. I'd like to see it take out that high before I go buy it. PRM, bottom left, top right. Notice that these stocks don't have a lot of volatility, and a lot of you get stuck in stocks that are very volatile. I'm trying to bring into play some stocks, whether they're short term, mid term, long term that don't have a lot of volatility that you can feel a little bit more comfortable jumping on board with. Another stock, Genworth Insurance, bottom left, top right, not a lot of volatility. New three-month high, 38 looks solid. Uh, KNSA, and again, these may not all be stocks that you know about, but I don't care. I want to bring these stocks to the forefront so that you have an opportunity to go, holy smokes, I didn't even know what this stock is doing. But notice over the last month, the 3 and the 8 have been solid, even on the sideways or pullbacks, kept you in the stock. New three-month high, RT above one. And the last stock in here is Elf uh, Personal Co Cosmetics, bottom left, top right. A little bit of a uh, shooting star pattern. Even on the pullback, end of day on one-month graph, the 3 and the 8 held. I'd like to see it take out that high. I think that the history shows that it's got more opportunities to the upside. All right, so we covered... Short-term plays, we covered swing trade plays, we covered speculative plays. What else can I do for you? Well, how about I'm going to give you some picks of my own. These are good undervalued stocks that are fundamentally sound that you can take some solace in knowing that uh, you can keep some of these in your portfolios. All of them are undervalued. They are all fundamentally sound that are going up and they are all buy recommendations. All right, let's change the graph again. I'm going to put this on a six-month graph. Remember, these are my picks for you. And let's go back to the swing, uh, G-E-T-R uh, swing. Again, looking at the 20-day exponential moving average. Look at these stocks, folks. Holy smokes. This is why I'm bringing them to your, for, uh, to your attention. Over the last six months, this chip company, SMCI, and it's in the news. A lot of people are probably trading it. And they're probably saying, oh my gosh, why do I have it? It's going down. Give the stock, take the noise out. Because this is a longer term play, a good value play, a good longer term play, give the stock a little bit more room. I got a 20-day exponential moving average, even on the pullback. Look at that. The 20-day is keeping you in it. Earnings per share looks good. The volume is good. It's undervalued. Next one. Now, this one, you wanted to talk about LNG. I still like it, but what is it in right now? It's in a sideways move. It's in a sideways move. I love the earnings per share. I love how grossly undervalued it is. These are a couple of things that I really, really, really like uh, about the stock. I really need this stock to get above that level of the high of 182.34. Does everybody see that? Yes or no? For everybody who's trading LNG, I'm not telling anybody to get out of it. I'm not telling anybody to get into it. But that's going to be the make or break for it because it's so grossly undervalued. Beautiful volume. Earnings per share. Folks, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, and as long as it stays in the channel, you should be fine. But I'm really looking to see if it can break above that. The long range is the bigger, uh, the longer the range, the bigger the breakout. I'm with you, 427. And I love the distance between this. This stock tells me it's got more room to the upside to meet up with value. All right, what else is in here? CPRX, a drug stock. I still own this stock. 20-day exponential moving average after the pullback, still in play. Earnings per share looks good and it's undervalued. And the next stock I've got is another semiconductor, uh, electronic miscellaneous, miscellaneous products, bottom left, top right, a little bit more volatility in it. Love the earnings per share. Love that the stock is currently back undervalued. It was overvalued for a short amount of time. I love that it's moving up. Look at that 20-day exponential moving average serving as a good level of support. And last but not least, FN, bottom left, top right, was in a channel, broke out, undervalued above the 20-day exponential moving average with rising earnings per share. Those are my picks for you. All right, and last but not least, EV companies. I got some news on some EV companies. Uh, one, Tesla recalled a lot of cars. Be careful with Tesla right now. Uh, General Motors, the bulk. How many of you have seen the Domino's commercials with talking about they've got you know over 100 electric vehicles on the road and they're going to start putting out more? General Motors, the bolt, uh, the EV bolt is the beneficiary of that. Ford Motors, their 150th thousandth um, electric, um, um, what's that car, Joey? Mustang, the 150. So they surpassed that 150,000 
So that's in there in XROF new news with Linamar with the E axle. So from my EV clean energy news, I've got some stocks in here. XROF has just been rocking and rolling. I ain't selling it, but it's been rocking and rolling uh, in here as well. Um, what time is it? Right at 2.45. I'm done. We had no picks from last week because we were close. All right, so I've got no uh, lists to look at to see how they did over the week. Next week, though, we will. A lot of these stocks for the short-term plays, the swing trade plays, the speculative plays, uh, we'll take a look at tomorrow to see how they panned out. Joey, put me on my ending screen. Man, we covered a lot in a short amount of time. Hopefully, I've given you some ideas on some stocks to look at, whether you're short-term speculative or swing trade. I put some stocks out there that have made the news so we can look at their graphs and get a better picture of, are these stocks still ready to run or not? Uh, we had a great special guest on today with uh, Jimmy Penna. Folks, hopefully, uh, Joey put that link back up in there. Um, see, support Joe, uh, support him. I, it's a free webcast, especially for those of you who are afraid of options. All right. Uh, I like steel. Roger, excuse me. Right now, I still like steel. STLD is in, in New Corp. I do like them. Um, <clears throat> and remember, the link that Joey put up there is for free webcasts. These webcasts are free. You get to learn a little bit more about how options can work for you. We've talked about the new store, the holiday, go support that as well, and our blog. I'm going to do that probably every live stream so that you guys understand the power of the blog and stocks that are out there and what's going on and how to use the VectorVest software to do so. And we're still running a special, 99 cents for a 30-day trial of the VectorVest system. Everything that I've done here from an analysis perspective, you, have, you will have access to for 30 days for 99 cents. Tell us about your 28-day challenge. There's going to be a video coming out on it. Uh, there's a promo video on our YouTube channel. Joey, is it live yet? For the 28-day? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so you want to learn more about the 28-day challenge? I've got a short yeah. video about what it's all about, and we'd love for you to take advantage of that. John says, thank you, VV, for Pin Duo Duo. Wow, what a mover. Uh, folks, I've, there's some stocks in the lists of things that I gave you today that could be possible movers as well. So with that, folks, I'm done for the day. I'm glad that you have, how many likes? We got 79. You know me. I want 100 likes before we go. If we can hit it, if we can hit it, we can. For those people who are still on the fence uh, about joining the channel, joining Big V Nation, folks, hit that subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button. My job, Patrick's job, all of our jobs here, are to provide you with the information that you're going to need to make money in the market. That's what we do. That's what we do. So hit the subscribe button, be a part of VV Nation. We are definitely a family. VV Nation, stand up. Type the ooeys in the room right now. VV Nation, that is the war cry of the jockey club. But right now, type the ooeys in the room to show support for VV Nation. For all those people who are sitting on the sidelines thinking about becoming a subscriber to the channel, show them what it's all about. We have a beautiful, awesome family called VV Nation, and um, th this is what we do. Th this is what we do, and we would love to have you as part of VV Nation. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. And with that, folks, adios. Arrivederci, ciao, au revoir, sayonara, aloha to all my peeps in Hawaii. Be careful. There's an active volcano on Hawaii. Don't get your feet burnt up. All right, bon dia, salam, shalom, namaste, yeah. So until the next time, folks, see ya.